Hey guys, welcome back to Yoga with Leona, your site for everything about yoga and breast cancer recovery. So I'm coming to you from a slightly different space today. It is just too hot to film outside at my house. So I'm filming here at Flying Heart Yoga, my local yoga studio here in Puerto Vallarta, owned by my good friend Willis, where I practice and teach. So this beautiful backdrop uh, is a little bit different for our video today. But I wanted to go ahead and get another uh, full-length yoga practice filmed for us. And this one's a general practice that's going to focus primarily on stretching the shoulders and chest, but it's going to get us a little bit of, uh, of a good stretch and good movement throughout the entire body. So this one should be uh, accessible to pretty much all levels. The only thing about this practice is we are going to spend a little bit of time on our knees. So uh, if you've got really sensitive knees and you don't like putting pressure onto your knees, you might want to uh, have a folded towel or blanket to pad your knees, or maybe you just move on to a different practice that doesn't have so much knee down uh, positions. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So finding a comfortable seat. Uh, and just before, actually, maybe just before we get started, you can see that I've got two blocks here at the front of my mat. I'm going to be using these for our traditional Y for C style sun salutations and transitions. If you don't have yoga blocks, the perfect alternative is to just put a chair at the front of your mat with the seat facing toward you. So you'll be able to use that either way. All right, very good. Now let's go ahead and get started. So finding your comfortable seat, whatever that looks like for you, resting your hands on your knees, feeling your spine stretch nice and tall, and just arriving here to your practice, committing a little time to your body to connect body and mind, finding that deep connection that helps us feel more grounded, more solid, and more connected to ourselves, as opposed to off flying around in our busy minds as we often are. So that being said, I'm going to start with a lovely quote from the father of modern mindfulness, John Kabat-Zinn, uh, who says, when we are more in touch with our body as a result of paying attention to it systematically, we will be far more attuned to what it is telling us and better equipped to respond appropriately. And so this is the challenge for your yoga practice today is to use your yoga practice as a mindful movement, as an opportunity to really tune in to what's going on in our bodies, to pay attention to what we're feeling, and to learn to listen to what our bodies are trying to tell us. So this is one of the true gifts of yoga, is helping us to connect in a better way, to be able to hear what our bodies need, and to be able to respond appropriately to whatever it is that we receive. So I'll remind you a few times as we go through the practice to just pay attention systematically to what your body's feeling in each position. All right, that being said, let's begin with a little breathing practice. We're going to take very simple square breathing today. We'll do this for about two minutes. So go ahead and again, check your seat, make sure you're feeling comfortable. And we'll begin with square breathing. You're going to imagine a big square box in front of you. We're going to inhale up one side of the box. We'll hold the inhale for an equal duration. We'll exhale down the other side of the box and we'll hold the exhale. All right, so let's begin. Go ahead and blow all of your air out. And then inhale for a count of two, three, four. Now hold the inhale, two, three, four, now exhale, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, now inhale, and hold, and exhale, and hold, keep going, inhale, and hold, and exhale, and hold. Keep going at your own pace. 
So you can count to four on each side of your box, or you can adjust the duration as you need. Remember, in all of our breathing exercises in yoga, we want to make sure that we're able to still feel relaxed as we're um, encouraging our lungs to expand in different ways. Never wanting to push your breathing practice so much that you feel choked or lightheaded. Anytime you feel anything like that, you can just back off. But otherwise, continuing with square breathing, an amazing practice to expand the lungs, to strengthen the lungs, and also to send some balancing signal through our nervous system to help us relax anytime we're feeling a little flustered. One more round of square breathing. And then allowing your breath to come back to natural. Maybe shake your body out once or twice. And then let's roll over onto our hands and knees to get started with our spine warm up. So this is uh, the first pose with a little pressure onto the knees. So remember, you can take a folded towel or blanket and place it under your knees if that helps you feel a little more comfortable in this position. And then we're going to have our wrists just under our shoulders and our knees just under our hips. And we're going to begin to wake up our spine with a little cat cow. So you may know this one. On an inhale, belly sinks down, head comes up, we arch our back. On an exhale, you push your spine up to the sky, head rolls down, spine rounds. Inhale, belly down, head up, maybe shoulder blades kiss on your back. Exhale, push the spine up to the sky. Keep going like this, stretching your spine forward and back at the pace of your own breath. And just feeling each vertebrae, each little disc in between the vertebrae, stretching and waking up, bringing nice blood flow into all of those ligaments and connective tissues on the front and back of your spine. Waking up the body, nourishing all of those tissues. Two more breaths like this. All right, very nice. And then coming back to neutral. Now we're going to spin on our right knee so that the right foot comes out to the side of the mat. The left foot goes long to the back. Our right hand is in the mat. Or if you have a yoga block, you can feel free to put your hand on top of the block. The left hand goes to the sky. And we stretch that left arm all the way up and over. So you're stretching your body as long as you can, fingertips to toes. Remember, if your left side is your tight side and you've had surgery, you can adjust and adapt this pose in any way you need. Maybe the arm bends or the hand becomes behind the head. If it feels good, stretch it big. And then let's take some big circles with that top arm. So stretching chest and shoulder. Maybe the arm even goes slightly behind you to open the pec. One more long stretch, and we'll come back to center. Let's take the other side. So again, using the block under your hand if you like, or I'll show it without. So we're spinning this time on the left knee, right leg long to the back, left arm in the floor, right arm to the sky. And then the right arm stretches up and over, and we stretch long from fingertips to toes. And then we begin with some big circles of that top arm. Noticing as your pectoralis muscles stretch a little, 
the tissues on the front of your chest and shoulder stretch. And again, remember, be mindful. If you've got tightness in these areas, listen to your body and adjust to the stretch as you need. Good. One more time. Stretch it long, tip to toe. And then let's come back to the center. Good. Let's take a little twist now. Right arm stretches up to the sky. And then that right arm's going to thread underneath our left arm and our right shoulder comes to the mat. You can adjust that left hand as you like. So most people will like the left hand in the floor here, kind of pushing gently into the floor to feel a nice stretch. You can also grab hold of your bottom arm, forearm, pushing that away as you twist. Or you can bring that top arm around behind your back, your choice. So we're waking up our spine with a little twist here. Good, and then come back to center, and we'll switch the sides. So left arm stretches up, and the left arm threads under the right left shoulder to the floor. Right arm can be sort of in front and in a cupcake hand. You can grab a hold of your left forearm and push it away as you stretch. Or you can bring the arm all the way around your back as you like. So figuring out what gives you the best twist here in our spine warm-up. Good, and then go ahead and come back to center. And let's sink our hips back for child's pose. I like to separate my knees a little so that my belly sort of sinks down in between my knees and then I shift side to side. Feel that low back stretch. Feel yourself lengthening from your fingertips all the way back to your hips. Stretching that spine nice and long. All right, good. Now we're gonna start waking up our spine a little more. So planting your hands, coming up through all fours and then lengthening your spine as you slowly allow your hips to sink down. So we don't want to dump into our low back here. We want to lengthen our spine. Imagine someone's pulling you by your hair up and forward. And then push it back to child's pose again. And let's try that one more time. So shifting forward, lengthen the spine slowly, letting your hips settle down, shoulder blades down and back. Good, and then push your hips up and back and let's have a seat on our heels. All right, so shake those wrists out. We had a little time on the wrists there. Shake those hands and wrists out. And then we'll keep going with a little more movement. So sitting on our heels at the back of our mat, we're gonna take three rounds of this kneeling sun salutation or sometimes called a moon salutation. So inhale. Stretch your body up, maybe a gentle back bend at the top. And then exhale, we're coming down into child's pose. So hands to the floor, hips sink back. Then we inhale up for a cow. So belly down, arch your back. And then we're gonna exhale, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Just one breath there. Then knees down, inhale, another cow. Exhale, sit it back, child's pose. And then inhale, rising all the way up, stretch to the sky a little back bend. And exhale, have a seat. That's one round. We're going to do two more. Inhale, rise up a little back bend. Exhale, folding down, child's pose. Inhale for a cow, arch your back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Knees down, cow. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, rise all the way up, a little back bend at the top. Exhale, have a seat. One more set. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for a cow. Exhale, downward facing dog. Knees down, cow. 
Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, rise all the way up. And exhale, have a seat. All right, good. So stop and breathe a moment. And let's come back to that idea for our theme, really tuning into your body, listening systematically to what your body is feeling. Just notice anywhere that you feel tightness, soreness, tuning into it, but listening with a little loving kindness, trying not to judge our bodies, just showing up for whatever it is we have today. All right, let's keep going. So we're going to come up to a stand and you're going to come maybe six or eight inches behind your blocks or behind the seat of your chair. If you don't have blocks, again, a chair at the front of your mat with the seat pointing toward you. And you'll remember that the reason for these blocks is to keep our back nice and flat as we bend forward. So what we don't want to do is curl forward and put a lot of pressure on our spine. So we're going to try to keep a nice flat back. We're going to bring our hands to our heart. And let's begin with a few sun salutations. So inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, bend your knees, keeping back nice and flat as your hands reach either for your blocks or your chair. And then step the left foot behind, working to straighten the front leg as much as possible. And then bend the front knee, look forward. Step forward. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale to your heart. Other side, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, sit your hips down nice. Flat back, reach for your blocks. Right foot steps back and we straighten and stretch that front leg. Then bend the front knee, look forward. Step forward and inhale, rise up. Exhale to your heart. Let's do another set, this time adding a twist. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, sit your hips down, hands reach for your blocks. Step the left foot back and twist your body to the right. So right hand either goes to the hip or to the sky. And then exhale back to the front, bend the front knee. Step forward and inhale, rise up. Exhale to your heart. Other side, inhale up, exhale, sit it down, flat back, reach for your blocks. Right foot steps back and we twist to the right. So left hand to your hip or to the sky. Exhale back to the front, bend the front knee, step forward and inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Beautiful, stop and breathe and just observe your body, observe your breath. Perhaps your heart rate has picked up a little bit. Just tuning into what the body is doing so that we get good at listening. All right, let's keep going. We're gonna do a couple of sequences here. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, sit your hips down nice, flat back, Grab your blocks, and then you're going to step the left foot behind, and we're going to stand up into warrior two. So in warrior two, the back foot is perpendicular to your mat, the front foot points forward, and the front knee is bent. You want to try to have the front knee just about above the ankle, so try not to let it go way in front of the ankle, having it be just above for the most stability. Arms extend out to the sides. And remember, you can adjust the arms in any way you need. So if you need to bend or bring them forward because your chest is tight, that's fine. Just find the pose that works for you and breathe. Now, keeping the legs just as they are, we're going to reverse it back arm down the back, front arm to the sky, stretch up to the sky and feel your right side stretch. Maybe that right chest stretches and the shoulder. Breathe. Good. Side angle pose. Right arm to your thigh so the forearm can rest on the thigh. Left arm to the sky. If you want it to be a little more challenging, you put that right arm in front of the right leg.
Good. Now straighten both legs. Reverse triangle. Back arm down. Front arm up. Stretch up and back. Bigger stretch through that right side. Good. Come back to warrior two, bending the front knee. Now we're going to interlace our hands behind our back. So you're going to try to clasp the hands. And if possible, you roll your chest all the way open and straighten the arms. Remember, this might not be accessible at first. You can use a strap in between the hands, or you can just hold the hands here. But eventually, working to open our chest, and then you're going to tilt your body to the upper left corner of your mat. We're coming to humble warrior here. So you can stay nice and high, or you can fold all the way down. Your choice. Just breathe. Stretching your chest and shoulders a little as you strengthen your legs. Good. Then release your hands to your blocks. Turn your body to the front. Step forward. Lengthen your spine and stand all the way up. Exhale to your heart. All right. Beautiful. Let's do the other side. Inhale. Stretch up. Exhale, sit your hips down. Remember, nice flat back. Now step the right foot behind. We're coming to warrior two on the other side. So the back foot again, perpendicular to your mat. Front foot faces forward. Front knee just above the ankle and breathe. Engaging your triceps, but feeling the shoulders relax. Good, reverse it, back arm down the back leg, front arm to the sky, stretch and breathe. Remember, modify in any way you need. Side angle pose, left arm to the front thigh, right arm to the sky. And remember, if you want a little more effort, you can put that left arm in front of the left leg. Breathe. Good, straighten both legs, back arm down the back, front arm up, stretch up and back, reverse triangle, really opening that left side. Good, and then coming back through warrior two, interlacing those hands behind your back. Remember, try to clasp them if you can, you could use a strap here and then roll your chest open as much as possible and tilt your body to the upper right corner of your mat. Humble warrior, breathe. Good, release those hands to your blocks, turn to face the front, step forward, Lengthen your spine and inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale your hands to your heart. Stop and breathe a moment. Just checking in with yourself, recognizing how your body's feeling. Noticing your breath and your heart rate. All right. One more sequence on each side. Inhale, stretch those arms up. Exhale, forward fold, flat back. Now step that left foot behind. We're gonna come to warrior two again, just for a moment. So find warrior two, engage those arms. And then let's take three big breaths on an inhale. You're gonna straighten the front leg, arms to the sky. Exhale, warrior two, that's one. Inhale up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale up. Exhale, warrior two. Good, stop and breathe a moment. Feel how solid and strong your legs are. Good, now we're gonna open our body to face the side of our mat. We're coming to goddess legs. So heels are in, toes are out at about 45 degrees. We're gonna inhale, rise up. 
And then exhale, knees nice and wide as you sit down into a cactus. Good, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, sit down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Now we're gonna stay here a moment and we're gonna take three cactus claps. So you're gonna bring your right hand over to meet the left and then open, left hand to the right and open. Two more on each side. Yeah, feel your legs getting strong as you move and feel a little stretch through your chest as you move through this cactus movement. Good, inhale, straighten those legs, stretch your arms to the sky, come back to warrior two toward the front, cartwheel the hands to meet your blocks, step forward and inhale, rise up, exhale to your heart. Stop and breathe. Last side here, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, sit it down, reach for your blocks. Right foot steps back, first we come to warrior two. Finding your warrior two. Find your breath and a little stillness. And then we'll take those three big breaths. Inhale, straight in the front leg, arms to the sky. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, up. Exhale, warrior two. Last one, inhale. Exhale. And breathe. Feel how strong your legs are. Feel how strong your arms are. And then open your body to face the right side of your mat. Find those goddess feet, heels in, toes out. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, sit it down for goddess. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Feel your spine nice and tall. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Trying not to pitch forward too much. Now, three cactus claps on each side again. So left hand meets the right and open. Right to left and open. Maybe on this side, when you open, you even bring the shoulder blades back to kiss a little on your back opening the chest a little more. Last one here. Good, now straighten the legs, reach those arms to the sky. Turn the feet back to warrior two. And then cartwheel the hands forward, step forward, and inhale, rise up. Exhale to your heart. Good, awesome work. So stop and breathe a moment. All right, now we're gonna take a little bit of a balancing pose combined with a twist to continue to open and stretch our chest a little bit. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn just to an angle so you can see it a little better. You're gonna shift the weight into your left foot, put your left hand on your hip, bend the right knee up, in front of you. And first, let's just balance here a moment. So feel your standing foot so solid in the floor. And if that's okay, then you're going to bring that left hand forward and grab the knee. The right arm is going to come out in front of you. And don't worry, if you wobble or you fall out, don't even worry about it. Once you find your balance, you're going to stretch that top arm up to the sky, and then you're going to open into a twist. So this is a big stretch through your right chest. You might need to adjust your hand at the knee. You might not be able to go all the way open. That's totally fine. We're working slowly to open and stretch our chest to get all of that flexibility back in the areas where there's scar tissue or tightening. So take your time, be patient with yourself and breathe. Good, and then come back to the top and let it go awesome shake it out a little let's do the other side all right so stepping weight into your right foot lifting that left knee up finding your balance here first 
And then when you're ready, right hand goes to left knee. Left arm stretches forward, up. And as you lengthen your spine, you spiral open here, left arm behind you. So you can feel that whole left chest open as you're balancing. So a lot going on in the body here. Balance and strength through the legs, chest opening, spine tall, breath calm. Very nice. Bring it up and let it go. All right, good. Very nice. Let's make our way onto the floor. We're going to take one posture just seated, and then we're going to do a little bit more on the knees to continue to open our chest. But first, just find a seat and find your breath. Yeah, throw yourself a little love, a little bit of compassion and understanding for whatever it is your body's been through. Hmm, it's the best thing you can do to get on your mat and make that mind-body connection, right? To connect with love and kindness instead of pushing away or distancing ourselves from our body. Connecting with love. Hmm. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is a, another little shoulder stretch that I call the Gomukhasana block pass. Gomukhasana means cow face position. It's one of the yoga positions, but this is sort of mimicking the cow face posture using a block. If you don't have a block, you could use like a water bottle or anything that's about, you know, a foot long or so. So I'm going to turn so you can see my back so you can see what I'm doing. This, the idea of this posture is to stretch our shoulders and get a little movement. So what you're going to do is bring the block into your right hand, and you're going to bring it up behind your head and let it hang down behind your shoulder blades. The left arm is going to reach thumb down, come up and behind, and see if you can grab the block. If that works, then you switch the sides. Left arm brings the block up and behind, right thumb points down and then reaches behind to grab the block. So we're going to just keep going back and forth like this a few times. And you can see that the upper shoulder opens as the lower shoulder sort of turns inward. So we're getting a beautiful stretch in multiple directions through our shoulders by taking this simple movement. If you drop the block or it doesn't work, don't even worry about it. And if you don't have a block or a water bottle, you could do this movement just with the arms by bringing the top hand to your upper back and the lower hand here, and then just switching the side. So you don't have to use the block. It just makes it a little bit um, more focused, I think, when you're grabbing the block. All right, wherever you are, let's go ahead and release that. So you can move your blocks out of the way and then stop and breathe a moment. Hmm. All right, now we're going to take one stretch on our knees, but we're going to use the wall. So I'm very close to the wall here, and that's going to help us maintain a little bit of alignment as we practice this stretch. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up onto our knees, and remember, if you want to put a blanket or something under that knee that's in the floor to pad it, that's perfectly fine. And then I've got my hip resting against the wall. So what we're going to do first is we're gonna bring both hands in front of us. My right shoulder is against the wall and I'm gonna stretch my right hand up and open as I try to open all the way toward the back. And then right arm comes up and open. And let's take the other side. So left arm comes up and open and we try to reach back toward the wall. Come up and forward and we'll go back and forth two more times. Now, remember, if you've got really tight shoulders or chest, you might not make it all the way around, and that's fine. And you might need to bend the arm, adjust it in any way that you need to, and then eventually working towards slightly more flexibility. Always, always listening to your body and adjusting in what way you need to make the pose work for you. Right? We never want to push to pain or stretch our scars too much. Good. Now let's stop and take a break. And then we'll take the other side. All right. 
So all of these are, you know, simple stretches that you could do. Say you've got a lot of tightness from radiation or surgery. You could just do this stretch by itself. You don't have to do the whole hour long practice every time you decide you want to stretch a little. So this one's a simple, easy thing to do. Let's turn around and take the other side. So opposite knee in the floor, hip against the wall, shoulder against the wall, arms come forward. Inhale, stretch up and open toward the wall. Come back up and over. Now the outer arm up and open and back to the front. Two more times. Remember, modify as you need, bend the arm or maybe don't twist quite as deeply. But using that wall as a guide to try to open our chest as much as we can. All right, awesome job. Very nice. Now let's come to a seat. And we're going to roll over onto our backs for a little back bending practice. So coming on to your back, if you've got a block and you know you want to use it for bridge, you could bring it with you. Uh, but first, just landing on your back and take a breath or two. Option number one, supported bridge. If you've got a block and you want to stick it under your sacrum, you can chill here for a restful bridge. Or option number two, feet flat, hands reach toward the heels. And on an inhale, you push your hips up to the sky, shimmy the shoulders together under your back. And once you're up, don't turn your neck to the side. Just keep gazing to the sky and breathe. Feel the strength in your legs, the stretch through your spine. Good, and then roll those hips down, knock your knees in, or let them fall out, whichever feels better to you. Just rest a moment. Hmm. All right, now we're gonna turn our bodies, since we're here at the wall anyway, we're gonna take about a minute or so of legs up the wall. So you're gonna bring your bum close to the wall, Take those legs up and just rest here. A nice restful inversion for about a minute. If it feels good to you and you want to take the legs wide, you can feel free to do that and get a little stretch through the inner thighs. But it's probably more restful to just leave the legs up. Take it as you like and breathe. Again, listening, observing your body, noticing how it feels today, which might be different than how it felt yesterday or how it felt a week or a year ago. But being compassionate and loving with ourselves, understanding that our bodies are doing the very best they can to heal and to take care of us. And so we have to work with them to continue to do what's best for us, to slowly work towards strengthening and stretching any parts of us that have been impacted by our cancer treatment, and to let go of any, any tendency to want to judge or, or uh, push away any scarring or any complications that we might have had. Really coming to deeply connect with your body and whatever it's going through today. All right, very nice. Now let's come down off the wall and we're gonna take one final stretch, a nice little spinal twist that's also a nice chest stretch. So I'm moving just a little away from the wall. I'm gonna bring my knees up above my hips and let them fall to the left 
And I'm going to roll my body all the way onto the left. So my hands come on top of one another. And then I'm going to open my arms as though I'm opening the pages of a book so that that right arm comes all the way up and over. I'm going to roll this open and close two or three times just to feel the stretch through my chest and shoulders and start to notice the twist in your spine. And maybe this last time as you open, you might adjust your shoulder blades to see if you can get them a little flatter on the floor. You might use this left hand on top of the right knee. And then let's just stay in this twist for a few breaths. Feel your body relax into the twist and stretch. Remember to adjust that right arm in any way you need to be kind to the tightness in your chest. Good, and then let's take the other side. So you're gonna roll those knees up and over to the other side. So rolling onto your right, the left hand comes on top of the right. And then we're gonna open and close our book two or three times. Maybe you feel that spine twist or you feel a little pop or crack in your spine. It's okay as long as there's no pain associated with it. Never stretching to pain. Good, on this last open, we're gonna settle our shoulder blades onto the mat, take the right hand to the left knee if that feels good, and then breathe into the twist. Hmm. All right. Very nice. When you're ready, coming back to the center and taking any little final movements that feel good to your body. Maybe you hug the knees into your chest or take a little happy baby, whatever feels nice. And then make your way onto your back for Savasana, finding a perfectly restful position on your back. Remembering that you can always prop your body in any way you need. You might put something under your knees or something under your head as you like. And then allow yourself to settle into Savasana. I'll come up to a seat to lead us through. So at the end of our yoga practice, always taking at least a few minutes to rest in stillness to allow your body to just stop and breathe, tuning your awareness into the sensation of your breath, gently moving in and out. Complete relaxation of body and mind. The only movement is your chest, and belly gently rising and falling and rising and falling. As you relax just a little more deeply with each exhale. And remembering if your mind starts to wander here, that's super common, totally normal. As soon as you notice it, just gently bring your mind back again to your breath, slowly training your mind to focus on the here and now. Using the breath as a tool, as an anchor, to always bring us back to this moment. Then remembering that you can stay as long as you like in Savasana. So if you've got more time, feel free to pause the video and stay as long as you want. But if you're ready, start to wake your body up with some small movements of the fingers and toes. 
I'll read for us again this beautiful quote from John Kabat-Zinn, the father of modern mindfulness, who says, when we are more in touch with our body as a result of paying attention to it systematically, we will be far more attuned to what it is telling us and better equipped to respond appropriately. So keep up your practice, keep connecting. Every time you get on your mat, you're connecting, you're strengthening that connection between your body and your mind so that you're more in tune with yourself and you know what you need to do. All right, when you're ready, you can roll onto the side of your choice and come up to a seat. Maybe throw yourself a little love for getting on your mat today. Beautiful, beautiful job committing to yourself, to your healing, to your wellness. All right, have an awesome day. Keep it up and let me know if I can help you in any way. Namaste.